Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Kudo Camera Company um, YouTube live stream. Today we are going to talk about Canon FD lenses and all the different types that there are. Um, there are quite a few different types of Canon FD lenses and they have some distinct differences so we'll go over those. And um, they all work generally, um, you know, they all work pretty much the same way. Uh, but they mount a little bit differently, so we're gonna we're gonna take a look at each of them in depth and see um, what the main differences are. So there's a few variants even within these, but let's just go over the main types. First, you have the Canon FL uh, lens. the The main characteristics of this lens are this um, breech mount um, uh, mounting system or breech lock mounting system. So basically, once you put the lens, uh, once you put the lens on, like so, um, then you twist this barrel here to to tighten it up and, and lock it in. So I'll show how each of them goes onto a camera, but that's the main characteristic. Um, and really, the differentiating characteristic is the aperture um, dial being up at the top. So it's a beautiful looking lens. It weighs a ton which I personally like in a lens. Um, and with this one, you can um, see the aperture blades going in and out with no, no issues. What you tend to see for drawbacks on these FL lenses are um, coating imperfections. Uh, you, you tend to see it ends up with some spots in the coating that can't come out. This particular one has a very small dot um, inside. It won't affect the image um, on this particular one, but it's still it's there, um, and they tend to just be you know big, beefy, heavy lenses. They're really nice. the The next style of lens is uh, Canon SSC, and what this is is kind of a hybrid, uh, I would say, between the newest iteration um, and the old FL. So the Canon SSC also features a rotating barrel lock um, that's going to lock onto your barrel, uh, lock onto your, your lens mount and, and fasten that way. And um, what it has uh, besides that is you, when you twist the, the aperture uh, blades, it, the aperture dial, it does not move um, without being mounted onto a lens. And on SSC, the, the lens blades are, uh, the aperture blades are always tucked away until it's actually being activated. We'll talk a little bit more about um, that in depth, but um, one more thing I wanna point out is this um, introduced the auto aperture feature. So there's no auto setting on this one. It's just, uh, there's auto, uh, there's an auto and manual preview switch here. Uh, that'll allow you to either, depending, it will basically, the way it works is when you push the switch over to, to auto, um, when you twist it, you won't see anything. So that's going to allow you to get full light into your camera, into your viewfinder. And then when this is uh, activated by the camera, it closes down. But if you want to see how your exposure is going to look while you're looking through the viewfinder, you can you you can have that switch uh, over a manual. But what it doesn't have is an auto exp or an auto aperture setting, whereas this one just goes up to 16. This one has the A at the end, so the A will allow that if your camera has a full um, auto mode and you switch over. To, uh, to A, it's gonna, this one seems to be a little bit jammed up. Um, that's gonna allow it to set the aperture for you, which is really cool if, uh, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, and then the last lens style that we'll look at is the Canon FD, the NFD. This is the one that most people think of when they think of um, a Canon FD lens. So this is a Canon uh, NFD lens. This was the most modern version of the FD 
mount lenses. It's got an auto aperture setting. And um, the main distinction there is uh, on this particular lens is also there's no more rotating breech lock. So this one just clicks onto the camera. Um, you basically put it on and rotate it and, and it locks in. And then to release it, it's got this uh, lens release button on the side. So you just push that and then you can rotate the camera back. So just looking at these three camera lenses here on the body itself, um, they'll all fit on any body uh, for the most part, but there's only, um, you know, this one doesn't have an auto aperture, so that, that's going to be a drawback on the old FL lenses, but uh, just to show you how it mounts, you've got the, you've got this turned all the way to the left, so it's in sort of the open position, and then you line up the red dot with the red dot on the camera, push it into place, so there's a little slot here that's going to line up with um, this tab here where this uh, little it's, 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 an, it's actually a screw but um, it's there to line up as a notch with uh, line up with a notch you get it into place line it up red dot to red dot and then you you just twist it and then I'll lock into place if you have it seated properly so you can see why these weren't quite as popular as far as the, the mounting is not always um, quite as easy and I wonder why I'm having a difficult time on this one. Let's try that again. So, huh. yeah. so yeah, if you're having this much difficulty, it's probably just not seated properly is all. Seems to be more than that. Kind of the most basic part of mounting the camera, so this is fairly important step here. Let's see. Oh, there we go. It just wasn't sitting properly. Interesting. issue mounting these can it be so you <laughs> just Wow. This is really interesting. What's up with this? It's almost like it's well now it's finally locked in, but boy that, that was tough. So you can see these are not user friendly mounts, so that's really the drawback and that's why it evolved. So I finally got it on there, but it was very, very difficult to get on. Um it's not normally that difficult, so it's not really a, a good representation of how easy it is to mount, but nonetheless. <laughs> Uh, so let's see how why that was so tough today well we'll see how the next one goes on but that's uh, nonetheless how the FLs go on so let's see if it's loosened up now no it seems like just this particular setup let's see it's probably the lens this lens is really beat up but it was the only FL lens that I had kicking around at the moment um, that wasn't already listed for sale so um, FL you can see it here on the on the on the name plate fl 50 millimeter f 1.4 and this is the second version um, i don't know the difference between the first version and the second version on the fl but um and then the ssc with the auto setting but still with the breech lock 
um, or barrel lock mounting system. So that's going to go red dot to red dot. And this one's already just looking to close into its place. So ergonomically, this one's already a lot better. Now, one of the things, um, and I've got a few of these SSC lenses, but I wanted to show you was SSC have one major flaw um, that, that I've identified. And if you look, you can see the aperture is not activating. The reason that the aperture is not activating is because these uh, SSC lenses have a funny way of getting oil all inside the blades. So because I think it's because of how they're always tucked into the, the edge of the body. So see how slow that was and see how there's oil on these blades. So if you're buying an as is lot of cameras, I would suggest that the the SSC models are the ones you kind of want to stay away from, uh, particularly the 1.450 millimeters. I've had a lot of um, 85 millimeters that come in clean and and other models, but the 50 millimeter f 1.4 for whatever reason, I would say um, about 50% of them have oil on the blades. Um, so on when you have the uh, lens engaged it's it's not always that bad you can see it's pretty reacts pretty well but when there's as much oil as there is on this particular model uh, or this particular um, unit you can see this one's going to be at risk of dripping the oil onto the lens onto the lens optics which isn't good that's how you end up with a lot of haze so this model um, is also known for having haze but otherwise it's a beautiful lens the SSC stands for Super Spectra Coated. This was the more advanced coating that they uh, made and carried over to the NFD. So the SSC version and the NFD do have the same coating. They're both the Super Spectra Coating. But um, it, they stopped putting SSC on this because it just became the standard for them and, and they didn't want to listen anymore. So. So this one, they made a big improvement on the coatings. Um, while the FL had coatings, it wasn't as advanced. So they made a big improvement on the coatings and they um, improved the, the, the mechanics on the, on the mounting system just a little bit. And the last one that will mount is the Canon NFD. Um, these can all be a little bit tricky to mount onto a mirrorless camera. So I'm going to do a separate video about that. Uh, but this one's the easiest to mount of all. You get a nice big red dot. You can't miss that. You just slap it into place, give it a good twist. And you hear that click and now you're good to go. Um, in general, this one has much better aperture um, longevity. I, I see very, very few of the 50 millimeter f 1.4s or the 1.8s with oil on the blades i would say about five to ten percent of them have probably even just around five percent um have oil on the blades whereas a good 50 percent of the ssc are going to have oil on the blades if you get them as is so if you buy an ssc from a dealer and you get a nice clean shot of the aperture blades and you can see that it's nice and clean no oil then you don't really have to worry about it. But if you are buying a bundle and you see, hey, there's a you know 50 millimeter f 1.4 in that lot and a few other lenses, there's a couple of third party lenses, but oh, that 50 millimeter is gonna be a real winner. It could be, but just be aware that there could be oil on those blades. So you wanna look out for that. Um, <clears throat> just quickly talking about the build as the last aspect of the video. Um, so you go from uh, very heavy with the FL to heavy and beefy to still heavy and, and definitely beefy, but more lightweight, more compact than the others. So you see just the profile, they've gotten a little bit smaller uh, with, with each iteration, a bit more comfortable. As much as I love the, the silver and orange, I think this one just has like a really funky, cool look with the orange and green and the silver. Um, and, and then this one is a little bit understated, but still a very, very good looking lens overall. But, um, 
not as cool. Uh, I mean, the SSC is kind of my favorite looking lens. It's got, you know, the nice designation there, SSC. Um, the FL, the main feature that's really the cool thing is this aperture ring being up at the top. And then this, uh, the, the NFD, as far as this distinguishing, distinguishing characteristic, there's, it's not quite as style, stylish as the others, but it's a great performer and it's just super reliable. Um, really sharp, uh, pleasing bokeh, excellent contrast and color. And the coating is, the coating is really good on it. So, um, so yeah, so if you have any questions about the types of, um, lenses, if you're using them on a 35 millimeter body and you want to know, uh, what's going to be best for you and what camera you have, um, you can let me know. Uh, I'll be glad to talk to you about that. So as always, please subscribe, check out our store. Um, you can visit us at kudocameracompany.com to get links to our eBay and Amazon. And as always, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And I appreciate your support and, and look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day.